Now we're ready to look at the general approach to cache design. We're going to combine the best features of the associative caches with the best features of a direct map cache. So in the general approach, we combine the best features of the set associative caches with the best features of the direct map caches. And to illustrate this design, we're going to look at a specific example. And it will be a 32 kilobyte cache that's eight-way set associative. So the idea is that we have a lot of little associative memories. We have many small associative memories and each one of these associative memories is quite small and in this example because it's eight-way each one has only eight lines. So the Block size is 64, we can call that B. Uh, the number of lines in each set is small, in this case it's 8, and we'll have 64 sets total. And this gives us our total cache size of 32 kilobytes. Here's how it works. We've got a 32-bit address, just as before, and we're going to divide it into a tag and an index and the block offset. So this is just the same as we did before. Um, the tag will now be 20 bits and the index will be 6 bits. Uh, that's the only difference. The block offset will remain at 6 bits. N with 6 bits we can address any byte within the block of 64 bytes. And as I said we have 64 sets in this particular example. So with it, with six bits of an index, we can choose which associative set we want. And then the remaining bits form the tag. So we can use this picture to show what this thing looks like. Okay, we, th I suppose I could draw a box around the whole thing, but this is the cache memory. Each line has both the tag and the 64 bytes of data just as before, but it's divided into sets and we've got 63, sorry, 64 sets total. And each set has eight lines, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So we have 64 sets, eight lines each. So how does it work? Well, the cache is given a 32-bit address. It starts by extracting the index and that identifies which set is involved. So the first step is to uh, extract those bits and identify the set and that set is then the one that we look into. So the cache it's an associative set so we provide the tag to that associative set and that associative set then checks all eight of its lines to see if there's a match with a line that's already in the set. And if there's a match, then we've got a, a, a cache hit. So now, <clears throat> blocks 2 and 514, for example, remember they, they mapped to the same line in the direct map cache, but now what happens? Well, they both map to set 2, okay, so that's just as before, so they both map to the same set, but Set 2 is more than just a single line. It can hold up to 8 blocks. So the direct map version, blocks 2 and 514 mapped to line 2 and it could only hold one block. But now these same two blocks map to the same set. However, the, the set can contain up to 8 blocks. The set is associative. So now the conflicts are much less likely. Okay, we uh, can still have conflicts, but it's, it's, it's much less likely. So going back to the previous diagram I had before, here is block number two, here is block 514, and uh, there may be some bytes that are in block two that are important, and there may be some bytes that are in block 514 that are in our working set. But both these blocks can be kept in the cache at the same time because we can put each one of them into 
set number two, and each set can contain up to eight blocks. It will contain eight blocks. So in this case, we're able to avoid that sort of conflict. And this is the sort of design that is used in caches.